The language we use plays a significant role in reinforcing or challenging ageism, which is discrimination or prejudice against individuals based on their age. Joining us today to talk about how language can perpetuate or combat ageism is Dr. Carolyn Snyder, a linguistic researcher specialized in language, aging, and dementia. Welcome, Dr. Schneider, or I should say guten tag to you. Um, <laughs> thanks for being with us. Yeah, guten tag. Thank you for having me. Could you explain why language is so powerful in reinforcing, but also challenging ageism? Well, so as a linguist, I believe that language shapes how we perceive and interact with the world. When we use derogatory or dismissive terms, Related to aging, it reform, uh, reinforces ageist stereotypes and creates a narrative where aging is seen as negative or undesirable. And on the other hand, if we use more positive, respectful and inclusive language, it can challenge those biases, stereotypes and shift how society views aging. So by changing how we talk about our older adults in our lives, we can either perpetuate um, those harmful stereotypes, or we can promote dignity, autonomy, respect, and inclusion. A lot of people just don't know what to say. So what are some of the common expressions that contribute to negative stereotypes about older adults? Well, a very common one is, oh, I forgot this, I might be getting dementia. So no, um, that is very hurtful for those who actually have received a diagnosis. Um, we use many, many expressions in our everyday conversations, like over the hill or a senior moment or that grumpy old man. And these are just some examples, of course, that reinforce those negative stereotypes. Um, those phrases imply that aging is synonymous with decline or memory loss or irritability. Um, but when we use that language, we diminish the value of older adults in society. And we are portraying aging as a process of losses, um, rather than relevance or capability. And um, well, older adults are a natural and valuable addition to society. Um, and our language should portray exactly that, highlighting strengths and opportunities. And so what impact does ageist language that has used, been used in the media have on public perception of older adults? Well, mostly uh, what comes to mind is an old frail hand and specifically around news, well, surrounding older adults or nursing homes or with the whole COVID-19 debates. And um, that sends a message uh, that older adults are exactly that, frail, and they just kind of blur into one big mass of people. But I want to highlight here the individuality of the single person, right? So everybody has lived a tremendously different life from their next door neighbor. So how can we, um, well, distinguish people and individuals within the media by just giving them faces, giving them individuality in the media? Um, well, and if we hear um, those, this kind of language that I just highlighted earlier in the media, we perpetuate and keep on using that um, because they model for us how we speak about certain parts of society. Um, so over time, these perceptions can lead to discriminatory practices or reduce opportunities for older adults who are very well active in their lives and foster a culture that undervalues their contributions. And, and Dr. Snyder, you mentioned uh, COVID-19. I wonder in medical and healthcare settings, how does ageist language affect the quality of care for older patients? Well, this can go both ways. So on the one hand, um, ageist language can lead to bias in their treatment. So if doctors and nurses dismiss symptoms as just well, attributed to old age or make assumptions about what an older person can or can't do, it can result in misdiagnoses or inappropriate care. But also 
maybe patients may report their symptoms or downgrade their symptoms a little bit because they attribute it to what they have read um, attributed to old age. Um, so we want to be very precise on both sides. People want to communicate clearly what they experience with sensations or changes in sensations they have and well, communicate those to practitioners and vice versa. So respectful patient-centered communication is the key um, to ensure older patients receive the quality of care they deserve based on their individual health needs rather than age-based assumptions. And because language is so important, how can inclusive language help to challenge stereotypes about aging and foster respect for older generations? Well, so inclusive language is vital for shifting the societal perspective and attitudes towards aging and by focusing on a person's abilities, contributions, individuality, rather than just their age, right? We all heard age is just a number. Um, we can help dismantle those stereotypes and show respect for older generations. Um, this language avoids pigeonholing people based on a specific age category um, and instead recognizes their continued relevance, experience and the diversity. And in turn, this fosters intergenerational respect, promotes more balanced, positive view of aging and that values the contribution of all ages to society. Dr. Schneider, thank you for those insights. Thank you so much. We've learned from Dr. Snyder how mindful language can reshape our views on aging and create a more respectful, inclusive society. <music>